moment for Hastings Diversified Utility Fund. A bit of a battle, if you like. Uh, confirmed bid today. What have you made of it all? Well, this is an interesting story, actually. This battle sort of continues on for Hastings, uh, Hastings Group. And today we've seen a, a binding uh, bid from the PPA Consortium. Uh, that's a $1.25 billion they're offering. And that's uh, made up of a Canadian fund as well as uh, the Utilities Trust of Australia. Now, they are bidding against APA, another listed company on the ASX. And um, they've offered a cash and script uh, offer for Hastings Group. Uh, given current share prices, that's around $2.11, while this bid binding today is for $2.35 and it is all cash. Now, at the moment, the ACCC is deciding on the APA uh, uh, bid, and so we're probably li unlikely to see any more action from APA until there is a result from the ACCC. But the market seems to be suggesting we could be see could be likely see further bids. Uh, certainly, the share price at the moment is above the two dollar thirty five bit binding bid we've seen today. So the market suggesting further bids could come possibly from APA um, after this ACCC decision is announced. But uh, certainly, they're looking at the, the the key assets here is that Epic pipelines. There's several pipelines included in the Pilbara. Um, uh, from Moomba down to Adelaide and also up in Queensland. And they're the key assets that these uh, they are bidding for that Hastings Group does have. Uh, and now at the moment, I would say that the bid today from uh, PPA has the slight advantage of the f uh, being the fact that it is an all-cash bid, not a cash script bid. Now, uh, takeover targets do certainly prefer all-cash bid over cash and script usually. Um, so certainly, uh, APA would have to up their bid uh, now, Bell Potter suggests that they could pay anywhere up to around $2.60 uh, for HDF. Uh, so we could see a further bid from APA. But M&A activity has been certainly driving Hastings share price. It's been a big outperformer over the past year. It's up 50% uh, and uh, really for dri being driven by these bids. And uh, today it's having another good day up around half a percent. Yeah, and look, up about half a percent, trading about $2.39, so well off that uh, target price you mentioned of potentially about $2.60. Tim, look, wanted to get your thoughts later. And it keeps securing contract wins. This one, not a huge one, about $122 million uh, over in Asia. That's right. The stock's actually trading lower today. And as you said, it's not a huge deal, $122 million for a coal-fired uh, power station over in the Philippines. But I think that what this highlights is uh, continuing contract wins for Leighton will be a positive, and certainly in the Asia region. Now, they do have a bit of a foothold in Asia already, uh, and certainly they'll be looking to this area as a major growth area in the future. Uh, there has been a lot flagged around Leighton, around problem projects here in Australia, uh, that Victorian desalination plant, the Brisbane airport link coming to an end now. They're looking at around possible $600 million losses on each of those projects by the end of uh by completion of those. Uh, given the fact that construction in Australia is in such a bad position at the moment as well, uh, growth overseas is a good thing for Leighton. And certainly their Middle East operations is another thing that has been flagged as a key risk lately. That Habtor Group, which they invested around $1.3 billion in, um, and there's been massive write-downs on this business uh, as they're having massive problems re uh, recovering receivables over there and also have quite a slow contract win rate, well below the, what they've targeted as what they want to win in terms of contracts over there. Uh, they're owed around $500 million just from an equestrian centre and the Doha city centre projects in Qatar. Uh, so this has been a major problem for, for Leighton uh, in the past. And yesterday we saw them sell off that Thiest Waste mm -hmm. Management Project. That'll be certainly beneficial in terms of the balance sheet. Uh, they'll be able to pay down some debt. But I think this news today certainly highlights the fact that Asia could be a big, big, uh, big driver for Leighton moving forward. I imagine they certainly hope so. And look, just wanted to get your thoughts more broadly on the market. Uh, hitting a little bit of a roadblock, if you like, in terms of that China data. Well, it's a bit of a disappointing day now. It started uh, on a positive note. We're up about 0.3 of a percent, uh, which was quite good considering the leads from offshore were quite soft. Uh, we'd seen so, uh, quite a lot of stocks in the green this morning, but now after midday and we saw those Chinese trade figures for the month of June come out and disappoint the market. We've seen uh, the materials sector in particular as expected fall uh, when these kinds of figures do disappoint the market. Materials are the major drag. We're seeing BHP, Big Miners, Rio, uh, Newcrest all lower at the moment. One actually bucking the trend is Fortescue Metals, which is up almost 1%. Uh, not exactly sure what's going on here. Could be possibly the fact that iron ore imports in China managed to rise 9.7% for the first six months of the year over the corresponding period last year. Uh, but certainly that trade data today, it is the import side, which only grew 6%, is what's disappointing the market. And uh, export, gro export growth 
was above expectations, but it did slow on the previous month. And this was really reflected in the Aussie dollar, which dropped about a third of a US cent uh, on, on reaction to this data. Uh, certainly Friday will be of interest to the market even more so than today's trade figures with the GDP figures. Consensus of around 7.7% uh, for second quarter growth in China. Uh, the Aussie dollar will be uh, driven by this kind of data that is being released today. Uh, but certainly that reaction in the Aussie dollar reflecting the disappointment in this data.